is on the subject of celebrations. Uh, today, <laughs> as Vlad, I'm sure, knew and has a story about, uh, it is International Whiskey Day today. And to celebrate that occasion and also Mr. Dutier, Mark Strassman traveled to the oldest continuously operating whiskey distillery in these United States. It's called the Buffalo Trace Distillery, even older than its home state of Kentucky. Mark learned about the distillery's history and why, when it comes to whiskey, age is more than just a number. New Orleans has Bourbon Street, but this is Bourbon Habit. I would like to personally welcome you to the oldest continually operated distillery in the United States. In Frankfort, Kentucky, tour guide Freddie Johnson's toasting the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Its 1775 distilling roots predate America itself. This is Warehouse J. Mark Brown, Buffalo Trace's president and CEO since 1997, finds whiskey drinkers to be famously passionate. Whiskey fans will debate whiskey the way sports fans will debate their favorite players and teams. Correct. The richness of the topic, I think, invites people in. There's just so much that you can talk about. Maybe you don't know Jack Daniels about whiskey. Well, bourbon is a type of whiskey with a grain mash made of at least 51% corn. It's distilled, fermented, cooked, and aged in new charred oak barrels for up to 25 years, resting in warehouses like this one. Barrels in a warehouse are just like real estate. Location, location, location. It's a process, a collaboration between Mother Nature and Father Time. What's left after years of rest finally rolls out barrel after barrel, ready for the cork to be removed. I gave it a shot. All right, now you got it. Now I got it, I can work here. That's a good one. Yeah. Buffalo Trace produces 250,000 barrels of whiskey a year, including its own brand and other big names like Blanton's, Eagle Rare, Weller, and Pappy Van Winkle which sells for thousands of dollars online. Delayed gratification rules here. Executives have to project their global market years in the future, even today. What we're selling today, we made that decision in 2015 about what we were gonna make. And today, we're making decisions about what we make for 2029. It's a challenging business that way. It is challenging, yes. In 97, said we should make that much for 2005, and everybody was looking around in 2005 going, what idiot didn't make enough whiskey? <laughs> you are looking at the culprit, <laughs> yeah. the, the responsible party. Since opening its warehouses in 1811, Buffalo Trace has built its institutional knowledge one sip at a time. Even during prohibition, it stayed open legally, one of four distilleries allowed to make medicinal whiskey. So there was us, three others, and Al Capone, <laughs> supplying the nation with all the whiskey it needed. Who pulled off what back then? So there are a few questions on our history we decided not, not to ask. Not to ask, <laughs> yes. that being one of them. The mixture that you see right here, that is a straight rye whiskey. For more than a century, Johnson's family has shared their history with the distilleries. Three generations of bourbon whisperers, starting with his grandfather, Jimmy Johnson Sr. He was the first African American to be a warehouse manager of a major distillery. So I started playing around here when I'm five years old. What was that like? <laughs> I was like uh, Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory. Yeah, I remember getting into a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> I really think they were worried more about the paperwork than they were about me as a kid, you know? <laughs> the distillery that you're visiting has the largest inventory of aged bourbons in the world. Over the past few decades, Johnson's been keeping his family's traditions alive and has become the only tour guide ever inducted into the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's no wonder guests travel near and far to spend time with this whiskey wizard. What is it you're hoping they walk away with? I think one is an appreciation of how the product that they've come to enjoy gets created and 
realizing as they walk away from here that they have changed, that their lives have actually been touched. He's living proof of an old joke among whiskey lovers. Whatever the question, bourbon is the answer. For CBS Mornings, Mark Strassman in Frankfort, Kentucky. I'll toast to that. <laughs>